option to make some coffee and, and snacks for yourselves, okay? Um, unless you're going to share. Thank you very much. Um, guys, um, age, using age. Children specifically, and especially children between those ages of when they start crawling and uh, walking um, up to going to, uh, uh, yeah, you know what, some of you are still children. Um, no, I'm being very sarcastic now. Um, usually primary school, primary, primary school age groups up to, let's say, grade seven. Very influential because they don't pay themselves. They have specific needs. It's often mostly different from their parents' needs. Um, but the parents carry the wallet. So marketers specifically target, I mean, that's why they put toys in certain aisles in, in shops. That's why they put certain items in, 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 a, in, a, in a supermarket layout on a certain height. How tall is a eight-year-old? What about this tall? Okay, so the products that they might be interested in is going to be shelved on this height in the shops. Not over there. That's why they that's why they often behave the way they do when they're in shops because they see things on the level that they walk. That's okay, right. Mama, I want this. Ooh, that's a challenge. So market is targeted specifically that age group because they know that's a route into the wallets of the parents. Okay. Parents have different um needs, different age group, different. I definitely had, have different needs now and spend my money on differently than I did when I was in my 30s and 40s, for instance. Right, I know you as students, if you have 10 bucks in your pocket, what are you going to buy? Okay. Is the money, has the money devalued that much? Let's make it 50. <laughs> still, you still can't buy anything for 50 bucks. You've got to play the Powerball. Somebody won the Powerball, eh? Powerball Plus, 53 million. No. Ouch. Um, anyway, you can only win if you play. Um, now, our needs are different when our ages are different. It's very much linked to it, and marketers know that, and they specifically target um, certain products um, and categorize markets, subcategorize markets. The whole demographic market is then um, subcategorized um, into age and gender and generations. And Okay, but you can also... You can also target a specific age in a specific generation. As we see later on, a generation spreads 10, 15 years, 20 years. And within that, you, um, I'm, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm um, supposed to be a baby boomer. But I'm also the year that um, I can, I'm, I'm borderline generation X as well. Okay. So the, my, the year of my birth is right in the middle between the two. Um, so you can have, be in different generations, or you can actually have certain characteristics of a particular generation. And then according to your age, within that, people born at the start of a particular generation period are going to have different needs to the ones that, let's say, for instance, you. You guys are, this your generation, gen, Generation Z, um, is anybody um, from about 7 to 22 years old. Okay? Anybody basically born... Um, between 2001 and 2012. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that the seven year old and a 21 year old's needs are going to be different and tastes are going to be different. Okay. Um, and um, that's why within a particular generation or within a particular age group, you can also break it down even further. The, the, the more you break it down, the more detailed a particular segment becomes the more accurate you can estimate the behavioral patterns and the buying patterns of, of a consumer. Okay. We'll see later when we um, um, look at age specific um, in, in greater detail um, that um, there are people who obviously have, have a certain biological age but they're actually much younger. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a much younger biological age than the chronological age. You know the difference between the two? What's your chronological age? Anybody? Any idea? 
Kijk eens. How old are you now? Anybody? I'm 56. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I know it goes on what you say there, but I know that you are between 18 and 21. 19. Okay, he's 19 years old. Okay, that's your chronological age. That's the time that has lapsed from the day that you were born up to now. Your biological age could be older or younger based on your lifestyle. Go to the gym, you eat differently, you eat healthy, you might be younger. So you get a very young 70-year-old, um, but you can also get a very old 30-year-old okay, based on um, your lifestyle and certain lifestyle choices that you've made. Generations. Let's look at each of the different generations in, in more detail to understand them. Right. For those who didn't know, generation that at the moment, since 2012, have been born, um, have already been categorized as a new generation. That's, if you end with Z, that's the last letter in the alphabet. You start with A again. So they generation alpha. Okay. Yes. Like, I've noticed some of them, like the, um, you know, the year gap. Yes. Like some are ages. Yes. Like either side. To be honest with you, um, I thought I thought about that as well because if, if you if you Google generations, um, you'll probably find ten different variations of when a generation starts and when somebody says uh, baby boomers uh, are from 1965 to 1981 and then the other one would say it's 1963 to 1983 it's it's um six of one half dozen of the other there's, there's no real um i think it's it's because um it is it's especially a, a appropriate i think when you find yourself let's say for instance we decide that that is the year that this generation starts and that for some reason, researchers, marketing researchers in the past decided that those are the parameters they're going to use. Um, then um, they usually have problems with that gray area a couple of years before and a couple of years after that particular date or year, um, because those characteristics um, can basically swing either way. Like in, in my case, I mean, if, if, you, if I take all the, the, the marketing research that's been published on my specific generation um, and I look at my age and I think, you know what, some of it is true, but some's not. It's like, it's like your horoscopes. I believe they, they actually want to do another horoscope, the 13th one. You all have to change. If you're a Gemini now, you're going to change to something different. You're going to be a bull. I mean, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm not going to. But there are people who, 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 um, who actually live by that. My stars say this. Oh, you know what? Just look outside the window and say what the weather says. And then actually, yeah. But anyway, um, for some people, it is important. Okay. Thank goodness we are different, eh? Would have been... Imagine we were all clones. No. I don't, I don't mean to entertain the thought any further. Right, the seniors, the older ones, born um, um, literally before, <laughs> before the um, 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 before the Second World War. Um, they are sort of, I think, the the quiet or the silent generation they call them. Right. Just to reiterate what I said earlier, make sure that you understand the difference between um, certain. Um, ages that your biological age is different to you can be different to your chronological age. I know, for instance, who's, who's, who's on the parents' medical and the medical is with discovery. I know that if you go on as part of those the, the vitality program, they, you can actually do that test, complete the test, and it will tell you what your what your um, biological age is. Based on it's, it's all lifestyle related questions to ask you. How many times in the week do you eat red meat? How many? And then we know. It's also, uh, again, six of this, half dozen of the other, because people don't always, are not always honest when they complete <laughs> those questions. They want to seem better than they are. You know what? The real live version doesn't lie. Okay, so, but anyway. Um, the first generation, as I said, what they also call um, the, um, the, 
um, post World War II, sort of 1945 onwards, um, called the Baby Boomers. I'm not going to, and if any of you at this point think, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to remember this? It's so much information. And uh, what if I, uh, I'm not going to ask you if, as an essay question ever in an exam or a test. Please explain the difference between the baby boomer generation and the generation X. Okay, and then you have to do an essay 20 mark, 25 mark. It's not, this is just to indicate to you um, a specific criteria that is used by marketers and to show that different generations have different characteristics. And maybe you'll pick up some of those because, oh, yes, I can see that's definitely my mother. Or um, once you, you can do that. Do that as kind of an exercise to, to, to see if uh, how, how correct this information is. Okay, so the great detail itself is, is, is interesting. Okay, but I'm not going to necessarily, um, for instance, say, um, <laughs> yeah. What are what are the years that's um, that baby boomers, the span of the baby boomers, 1946 to 1965, whatever? No, that's not important. Okay, it's interesting, and that's why we do it. There are some certain characteristics, however, um, and, and why it's important because we are studying marketing. It's important because as future marketers, you will at one point be confronted with um, the specific challenge of having to design a commercial or a campaign that focuses um, on multi-generational marketing. Multi-generational marketing. The concept itself specifically refers to in your household, who who has anybody else in their family, like a grandmother or a grandfather, or um, who also stays within the same household? See, there's three generations in one household under one roof. Okay, they have most likely completely different um, needs, okay? The over 60s, they're gonna go for pills and medicine and stuff, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but it is going to be different, okay? If you have different generations in a household, and, and even if you do not have three generations, um, grandfather, your father, and you under one roof, there would at least be two because both you and your parents are from different generations. Okay, so there's already multi-generational marketing um, re required for um, specific products that you all consume, household goods that we use in, um, um, and, um, on a daily basis. Okay, let's look at the, the next generation, Generation X. I'm supposed to be a Generation X. You know what? Some of these things are they read and I think, oh my word, no. This is not me. Interesting fact about this particular generation. Um, they leave home later. Okay. They're not they're not necessarily boomerang children, okay, that keep on going back to to their parents and stay there. Um, but they do tend to um marry later in life um, or at a later age because I mean, traditionally it was you finish school, you go work, you go study if there's money. Um, next thing is you start a family. Next thing is you marry and you start a family, right? That, that was a sort of a, that is completely thrown out the window. Um, the Generation X specifically started that trend by saying, right, we're not going to get married at 22. Um, they started marrying later. They started staying with their parents later. Um, and it's, um, it's obviously something that um, marketers need to consider um, and why they look at specific characteristics in certain generations um, like this one specifically. There are a few other ones that's also interesting. 
these of this particular generation are not people who are um, keen on working for one company uh, for the rest of their lives, like their parents, the baby boomers did. Okay, work for a company for 30 years, retire, get a golden watch and a handshake and say thank you very much for being loyal and whatever. Nowadays, again, Generation X started that trend of we are going to, I'm going to go um, um, and, and I'm going to, strangely enough, they don't, they don't, they don't move around outside their specific industry. They may change. Um, um, they may change jobs, but their career path still remains within the same particular industry. I take myself as an example, and there I'm definitely true to what um, um, to a generation Xer. Um, I chose to, after school, or well, I studied um, and obtained commercial qualifications. Um, but even when I was at a student at Varsity, I was always keen on, on rather having my own business than, than actually um, just being employed. Um, I got involved in, in, I've always been involved in cricket, and I coach cricket professionally as well. I started the Cricket Academy. Um, in other words, coaches are also educators. They teach other people certain skills so they can be better in whatever they do. Um, while I was doing that, I also got a part-time job as a lecturer at the university. So I was very much into that. And then the, the, um, following that, also involved at the previous college. Um, initially, before going into management, um, I was also a lecturer. Um, and lo and behold, um, when the new opportunity popped up a couple of years ago, here I am again. So I've changed in that period, um, I would say in, in my career as, as, as my working career, um, I've probably changed, yeah, well, I've probably had five, five companies that I worked for, but they're all in the same industry. Okay, so that's very typical to uh, Generation X. Generation Z, you guys, where we get to very quick soon now, um, exactly opposite. You leave tomorrow, even if you've been with the company for three weeks or three months. If there's another better opportunity that comes up, thank you very much. Okay, it doesn't mean you're disloyal. It just means that you are, as a result of the fast pace that you were born into, or the fast pace that. Um, uh, um, um, you were sort of born after the um, um, technology really um, hit us in the early 19, um, 1990s. So you were born into, and that's why you're tech savvy as well, very tech savvy, because I mean, you know, you don't know different. You can't understand. Oh, huh? Seriously? Did you guys have a phone that was mounted on the wall and you had a, a cord that actually connected it to? No, oh, seriously? Yes, we did. The first car phones were like that as well. As well. It had a cord. Um, and yeah, so it's difficult uh, for, um, for Generation Zs to understand that it, was, that it ever was any different to what it is at the moment. OK. Um, they're not interested to work excessive hours to earn a high salary. I'm definitely not Generation X. I love to work. No rush to marry and start a family? That's definitely me, Generation X. Only got married when I was 31. Um, so definitely Generation X. Now we get to the millennials. Hmm. Millennials? The millennials are now the children of the baby boomers. Okay. And see how much they different they are already. Very brand loyal. Very brand loyal. If it's not a hurley top or a hurley cap, then sorry, I'm not buying a cap today or a top today. Okay, you are very loyal to a specific brand. Also, love to hang out in the malls. Gen Z's as well? Not so much. You guys. Who loves hanging out in the mall? Shopping malls. Not really. Hey? <laughs> exactly. Can you see again, very much within the same generation, you, you haven't changed generations, you are still Gen Z's, but when you were early Gen Z's, 
for younger Gen Zs, already different needs. Okay. We'll see later on when um, your um, the phase that you find yourself in your life cycle um, also comes into question, and that's how you go through. Um, you go through different phases in your in your in your life cycle as a human being um, within the generation that you are. Uh, very pragmatic, very savvy. Yeah, socially and environmentally aware, definitely. It's similarly with the Gen Zs. Let's get to you and see how much of this is true. Born after 1996, yes, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yes, most of you. Yeah. Um, yep, that's probably your age. Very brand conscious. Uh -uh, not really. I mean, no, no, no brand's also a brand, eh? Um, it's amazing. Uh, there was a stage, I think, when I was at Varsity, when everybody, um, if you, if there was no logo on your T-shirt, it was actually fine. That that was a trend. Oh, there were a few other things that were trends that actually. It's interesting to talk <laughs> on the radio yesterday when they um, about there are certain things. If you are rich, if you do that, it's called classy. And there are certain things that you, the same thing that you do when you're poor, you call trashy. Okay. I'll give you some examples that and I was actually quite hilarious. I really enjoyed it. I almost, um, almost ran, uh, ran off the road with my car. If you get married in your backyard, you feel rich. It's usually a massive tent and it's a huge, uh, you probably live somewhere on a state. Classy, that was epic, epic wedding. You marry in your backyard when you're poor. You use a cheapskate. Couldn't afford a venue. Okay. Same thing. You um, you walk around in your gown and your pantoffles, right? Sipping on a cocktail. When you're rich. It's actually not called a gown, it's called a, a robe, right? And it's actually not called um, pantoffles, it's called loafers, classy. Okay, if you do that when you're poor, oh, that's common, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, um, yeah. Anyway, again, interesting how we value things according to our social class sometimes, or classify things according to our social class. Right, Gen Z's, um, entrepreneurs, any of you? Who already has three businesses or have sold five already or busy with a second million? Did you see the first Bitcoin? Um, what's, Africa, what, what's English for um, um, milliard? Billion, it's the billion. A billion. Nine zeros. Nine zeros, yes, a billion, yeah. The first Bitcoin billionaire. The youngster, 27 year old. I think he's from Sweden or something, or whatever. Just over, just over, just over one billion, yes, Bitcoins. Not bad. Then also, Bitcoins, I think, is probably now about uh, $3,000 each. Yeah, you can imagine. Mm. Different world we live in, eh? Are you less focused? Uh, yes, I think we've determined that. <laughs> Tongue in. Uh, pretty much, I think what we said initially, attention span, definitely not, you're, you're definitely more goal-driven than, than the previous generation, and even... Um, the generation X before them, um, without a doubt, yes. Um, but um, it's more, it more relates to your um, attention span, yes. You can do a lot of things. You can definitely multitask without a doubt. But um, yeah, it's almost like finishing one thing it seems like, okay, right, um, that means that I have to do another thing. And you're busy with so many things at the same time that you... Um, I think people from previous generations wonder what would you have been able to achieve if you focus on just one or two of them. 
but again, it, the results can't complain. You guys are the you're, you're the, the next Elon Musk and the next generation, and um, um, will come from from Gen Zs without a doubt. Okay, we can also look at gender. Very interesting fact from a marketing point of view: women are responsible for more than eighty percent of the spending. Not spending; they overlook the spending. They. It's not the face. No, don't read it. Read it as it says there. You oversee more than eighty percent. In other words, you influence or do it yourself. Okay. What if you bought for your mother's for Mother's Day? Oh, ah, who, who said when is it Mother's Day? People, you've got to remember these things. It's very vital. Especially when you get your results from your first test and you go home and say, Mom, uh, you know what? Uh, rather get a good gift now if you're not sure you're going to do well in the test next week. Okay? This is coming Sunday. But then on the other hand, I mean, in, in, in our family, um, we're not a weird family, um, but we, we, we tend to skip these kind of commercial events like Valentine's Day. Why would I pay double for the same thing on Valentine's Day that it was yesterday and will be tomorrow? Same with mother. I walked through the uh, um, 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 small mall yesterday and I saw, what? It's like double the price. Mother's Day special. <laughs> it's not a special. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Please remember for those who are not sure that the academic performance are up to standard. I'm not talking about this specific module because you have not been assessed, so I can't evaluate you. I will never judge you, but I can't evaluate you yet. I'm not sure. And you don't know either. Okay. So, if, But if you're unsure, get your mother a good, nice gift for the weekend. Interesting enough, they, they're also on, on the same chat show and breakfast show in the morning um, last week. Um, they want people to actually, uh, or they actually ask mothers to phone in and say, what do you want? Remember when you were in primary school? Okay, you were making these macaroni frames with a picture in, right? Right? I just don't want that. Nine out of the ten mothers that phoned in to say, what's on top of your wish list for Mother's Day? What would you say? Leave me alone for a day. <laughs> I just need time. I don't want to see any of you. Don't spoil me and take, leave me alone. Let me get up whenever I want to get up. Don't spoil me with breakfast in bed. Let me rather sleep an extra two hours. They all want a time. Um, and then I think we realize if you see that's the response um, from real people, real mothers out there, um, then we realize how much they actually do and how much they get done. Um, I, I look at I look at my wife every day as well. I think I don't know how she does it. Not just for one week or one month, every year, year in, year out. Teacher spinning class at five in the morning, then rush off to work and then pick up the kids at school and then work again. And in the meantime, also study um, for a master's degree, you know? which is the third one in three years. I don't know. I don't know. Um, they do say, however, that if you don't challenge yourself, you don't know what you're capable of. OK, and I think sometimes. Um, because of that approach, we need a break. So give your mother a break on Sunday. Um, on, and don't use that as an excuse. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Was it Mother's Day yesterday? Okay. By just disappearing so that she doesn't see you for the day. That That's not what she means when she says, leave me alone. It means don't bother. Don't ask her anything. Okay. Anyway. Um, women, however, do <laughs> account for 47% of online shopping. That's not even a half. Jeez, what three percent? <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, well, what about the other percentage? Okay. When other like non-binary people, 
Ya bu. I'm going to tick that one. What does that button do? <laughs> no, sorry. Um, no, um, interesting facts, because who are you as future marketers? We've said it in the first session when we started this module. Who are you targeting? You know what you have to do. You know what your objective is. That is to satisfy the needs of the customer, right? Who do you target? Who do you target? Taking all of this into consideration and what, what more is to come. Whoever's carrying the wallet, that's the person. You want what's in his wallet or her wallet or in their wallets. That's what you're targeting. Okay. So regardless of the gender or the age, whatever, whoever is the one who's going to pay is what you target. There will be some influencers and other um, um, factors and outside forces that impact on the decisions that's taken. Somebody at the store at the end of the day has to pay. Okay. That's what you always target. Okay. Let's move on. What's next? Oh, yes. That's a bit small. I'm going to read that for you. Truth of life. It takes seven seconds for food to pass through your mouth to your stomach. A human hair can hold three kilograms. The length of the penis is three times the length of the thumb. The female is as hard as concrete. A woman's heart beats faster than a man's. Women blink twice as much as men. We use 300 muscles just to keep our balance when we stand. The woman has read this entire text. The man is still looking at his thumbs. <laughs> Right? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you, <laughs> from the last I gather, you concur. <laughs> Very true, right? Hmm. Income. We said, who's carrying the wallet? What you have in your wallet is bottom line what will influence what you're going to buy, if you can buy it, if you can afford it or not. Look what, um, you remember that face at the bottom? Seen it before? Maybe before your time? He's also, he's also Generation X. Married to Angelina Jolie. Now everybody thinks, oh, yeah, 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 I've heard that. Okay. Brad Pitt. Interesting quote, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Often happens, often happens. Chapter three, when we did, um, when we addressed consumer behavior, those reference groups, people we want to impress so we can actually enhance or improve our social status in a particular, um, in a particular um, reference group that we aspire to belong to doesn't mean that all the decisions all the buying decisions that we take are emotional decisions okay money unfortunately is required and therefore it is a demographic criteria that we have to consider Consumers from different ethnic groups will definitely have different um, um, buying patterns um, and consumption um, patterns, without a doubt, of course. I think it uh, links uh, um, close to um, social class as well. Um, although some people will call it controversial, um, the black middle class um, in specifically South Africa is, is, a, is a fast growing market. Again, people follow the money marketers follow the money because that's the people who are going to spend okay um they have um and some interesting um some interesting terminology different groups within um the black middle class they've got the, what they call the um um aspirants those are the ones who 
earn about 10 to 16k a month and they aspire to i'm gonna get there i'm gonna make it um they're not there yet they're just starting off and they aspire to be um what um the forerunners are basically the mafisky um uh, zolos the new arrivals oh and flashy very brand conscious very flamboyant spenders okay they will always buy the best brand and the most expensive brand the second wave grew up in the middle class and they actually um, are better educated um, and then we also have the forerunners which were initially um, the first um, can be categorized as the first um, members of the black middle class in South Africa. So they've been around the bend. They know exactly. They're more um, discreet when it comes to their spending as well. They budget um, and they stick to those budgets. So they're not um, like the young up-and-coming um, aspiring um, aspiring to be middle class. Not yet middle class, but aspiring to be middle class um, members of um, the black middle class. Right. It can also include our family life cycle we know that we go through different and if you look at um the the image itself um you're single then you're a couple then you're a couple with children then the children become teenagers and then they leave and they start their own families and the cycle repeats itself um through all of those individual phases in your um life cycle as a human being your needs change. I can remember first when um, when I got married, uh, my wife had a small vehicle. Um, I think it was one of those small city cars. Uh, I had a, a Ford Bantam Bucky. So it was the two of us. No, no, no. She actually sold her car. That's right. It was Ford Bantam Bucky. Um, it was the two of us and 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 and, and um, a Labrador. Okay. The cricket gear, the camping gear, everything went in there. I did my first comrades um, in 1997, and I slept at the back of my bucket. I had a um, mattress at the back. That's That was my evening before. Oh, well, you don't sleep that much the evening before anyway. Um, I did not uh, sleep in my bucket the evening after the race, though. I did treat myself to a bit more luxury, like a bed, um, an actual bed, a real bed. <laughs> um, but then we started a family. Um, how, uh, where can I put the baby seat? I can't put the baby seat in the back of the bucky. I can't put it in the cabin in, 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 in front as well. So what happens? You sell your vehicle because you enter the new phase in your life and you're getting a sedan. So it has two seats at the back as well. Okay, which very soon becomes an SUV because when they start going to school and they're teenagers, it's not just them and all their gear and their different sporting gear and one's off to this and one's off to that. It also, um, usually, they've got two or three friends tagging along, okay? And then all of a sudden, whoops, they're out of the house and, geez, why is there so much space in my car? Okay, so you go through different, um, you go through different phases in your life um, and your needs change as you change from one phase in your life cycle to another. Another dimension already, um, our demographics was the third one. We're also looking at our psychographics. Specifically refers to your lifestyle. Different people, different lifestyles. Um, what would you do if you were in the Powerball? Would you buy a yacht or a car like that? I mean, you're different. I'm, uh, as a, as, as a, as a uh, Generation X, I'm asking you, Gen Z, what would you buy when you were in... I know what I would buy when I, um, or how I would spend my 53 million if I win the Powerball. What would you do with 53 million? Anybody online can join as well, eh? Yes. So I would buy an island that's completely self sustainable and just live right off my days alone. Okay. Island in the okay, I'm assuming you probably didn't tell anybody that you won. That's why you want to disappear off the grid completely. <laughs> Then I think it's a good idea. Yes. I will invest and buy properties. Ah, yes. You are definitely not Gen Z. You are Gen X. Um, because that's what they will do. Um, I will definitely. 
I will definitely also, um, it will be very hard not to tell family um, because all of a sudden, I mean, <laughs> um, I'll take a million and I'll spend it on things that I want. I'm not going to sell my house and move into a bigger one. I mean, I'm downscaling as it is. I'd much rather buy each of my children a house and say, well, there we go. That's that's a good good start. Um, but the majority, the majority, I'll probably, like you have said, um, smuggle so I'll, I'll probably invest as well. Because just the interest on that is probably what you're earning, three times what you're earning at the moment anyway. So why would you? It, it's actually, uh, that that just gives you that comfort of not having to worry. Okay, so they pay your salary on the 25th. Oh, you know what? You can do it on the 27th. I don't really mind. Um, just to have that kind of comfort. Um, yes. I'd buy two for yacht, like uh, if, if yacht and I chartered out. You make like 200% profit on the charter. So. I know. Yeah, um, my, my neighbor's son actually went over just before COVID. Um, he, he completed his training and he went over to his... SCCW course. Woo, yeah. He's somewhere on the Mediterranean, um, or was, when, when um, lockdown kicked in. Um, I can't think of a better place to be stuck at. Maybe the Caribbean, I have to admit. Um, been to both, and um, I do prefer the Caribbean in that, um, yeah. If I have to be stuck somewhere, it'll be somewhere there. That's not a bad idea. Mm. Okay. Another island. Just because you can. Well, that's what Mark Shuttleworth did. I mean, he had the money, so I mean, why do I want to be the first South African in space? Yeah, buy a planet. <laughs> Find a planet and buy it. I was here first. <laughs> Oh, my word. Um, you'll be right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting ideas. Thank you very much. Um, oh, well, at, at least register it and then <laughs> <laughs> make sure that nobody else can claim it. Um, because, you know, if you if, if the first people, if, if we're ever going to have people that live on Mars, you think everybody people want a people want an alternative? Currently, we don't have one. That's why we're here. Um, but we've already populated the entire planet. I mean, we've moved. Ah, we don't like it here. Let's immigrate to Australia or to Belgium or wherever. I mean, we, if you don't really like it, we are, and then you just move. That's 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 a modern trend. So I mean, why limit yourself to this planet? Currently, only doing it because there's no alternative. <laughs> Okay, why, why do you think they are the, the have a space program? Just to prove that there are um, other um, life out there in our solar system? Really? Seriously? You're looking for something something else? Well, anyway, it's an old subject in itself. But yeah, I'll, I'll, buying a planet is not a bad idea either. So you, can, you can buy it for cheap. You can buy it for a dollar. Because there's no competition. <laughs> Do you have the money to buy the plan? No, no, okay, all right. Sit down. Um, it's so mine so then. Imagine you actually spend like $20 million on buying a plan and you get it back. Um, you just never ever lose it. Oh, it's not. Yeah, exactly. When you say agents, you can sell it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can actually, yeah. I'm selling planets. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, we can only do the virtual tour today. Um, yeah. But uh, yes, it's it's interesting, and I think we, uh, th there have been scams like that. People selling property on other on planets that <laughs> haven't been populated yet. Then you have too much money, really. Um, basically, as I said, um, also from the previous slide, that you can um, see that um, very important for marketers are the activities, the interests, and the hobbies of um, of people. Who are outdoor? Who's the camping type? There we go. See. Right. I'll probably bump into you at um, Camp World at some point. Or well, Cape Union Mart, one of those places. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Um, so, yes, um, it is people like to spend money on things they like and enjoy. How are you going to reward yourself? You're going to reward yourself with whatever, whatever makes you feel excessively happy. 
We all have something like that, right? Your wish list. We all have different. We all have different things that, that really excites us and really. If I have the money, that's what I will do. Any of those? I always wanted to. I always wanted to um, be able to send my mother to, uh, because I know it was one of her dreams to watch a live tennis match at Wimbledon. For some other reason, that's what she wanted to. Um, I never got the opportunity, but my sister bought. <laughs> um, um, bought her a ticket eventually, um, but then I had the fortune to um, actually also attend the game there myself um, or games. Anyway, um, interest. What interests you is, is what will make you save money for and spend it on. That's why it's important for marketers to know that. That's a, um, just a diagram um, that's in your, in your textbooks as well. Um, and just categorizing again interests and hobbies and activities. Okay. Benefits. We also put, um, we also um, segment the market according to benefits that people get from from particular items. Um, let me show you um, on the next on the next slide. You'll see that uh, there's a. I think it's table 6.2 in your textbooks as well. Um, it's hard for me to read on this screen because it is very small because there's a lot of information on there. But for instance, um, it's 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 uh, the benefits of the of the market specifically of of snack foods. Okay, so you will have different types of people. You'll have your nutritional snackers, you'll have your Weight Watchers, you'll have your guilty snackers, you've got your party snackers, and you've got your economical snackers. Okay, um, let's pick any of them. Um, the biggest percentage are nutritional snackers. Now, their demographics is they are better educated and they have younger children. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they they want their children to um, to um, to eat healthy and have a healthy lifestyle, so they expose them to that. Um, the lifestyle characteristics of these individuals as they are very assured and very controlled people. Um, and the types of snacks um, that they would usually eat are fruits and veggies and cheeses. Okay, that's what this diagram is about. You can put those the, at the top. You have in your horizontal um, um, at the top. You have different types of snackers different reasons basically why people snack um, and, and then according to that you have um, all those characteristics that we've just mentioned okay so that's also again do you find uh, would you find that I am um, take information from a table like this and put it into a test on an exam whatever maybe say um, what would you which of the following characteristics are, um, are not characteristics of a um, nutritional snacker no I won't Okay, this is interesting information, and just to in uh, again um, indicate to you how um, to indicate to you um, how much detail um, within a particular segment is required um, to hit the bullseye most of the time when you are targeting a specific consumer or consumer group. Um, for what we refer to as a um, a market segment. Okay. I think our time's done for the day, if I'm correct. Yeah, we are done for the day. Any questions at this point? We've got, we'll resume with this um, tomorrow. Um, and we'll be looking at, uh, at, at four different levels of marketing segmentation. Mass marketing, segment marketing, niche marketing, Okay, and micro marketing. Those are the four segments that we'll be looking at tomorrow, um, and we'll finish off the chapter with. Um, I think that finishes the chapter. Yes. Okay. Remember, to, you guys are not here tomorrow. You're online, eh? Uh, yeah. You're yeah. In the same classroom. Okay. I think we might. No, it's eleven. I think. S9, this one here at the, at the top. Okay. Right, thank you very much for those students who are here. We'll see you again tomorrow. Um, take care. The roads are going to be wet. The cold front's not gone yet.
Um, keep on your masks. Um, stay safe. Take your vitamins. Okay, we'll see each other tomorrow. For those online, thank you very much. Um, we'll chat again. Um, we'll chat again tomorrow for a double period. And um, again, remind all your classmates who have not attended today that um, we will be spending and devoting sufficient time um, to the test next week and the preparation for the test. Excuse me, thank you. You'll tell them. I will enjoy my day the same to you.